Welcome to another episode, and welcome to a video I will to make for pretty much since I started this channel. Uh, I am a massive fan of Death Battle, personally, and I thought it'd be fun to rank all the <laughs> episodes of Season 8. Season 8 has overall probably been my favourite season of Death Battle ever, and it's got some really good episodes, to the point where I genuinely don't think there's a bad one amongst them. But which ones do I think are the least good? Which ones do I think are my favorites? Whatever. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna say controversial takes. Uh, this is my opinion, and uh, yeah, that's. <laughs> Some people might get angry at these takes. <laughs> also, I'm no professional death battle, like analysis or or whatever. Uh, generally. If a fight's janky, I can overlook that a bit if it's got some good moments. Like, I don't see much of the jank in some of the 3D fights we got this season. And also I'm gonna say, there's uh, probably two episodes in particular, wait no, three, that are gonna be really big shockers here. Anyway, let's just start off at number 16, which is really hard to pick a worst. Because, like, most of these episodes were really good, but... For me, number 16 is Shadow vs. Ryuko. I, I don't know why, it just I feel like it screams missed potential to me. Like, you could have had some really cool moments, especially with the death. But, you know, it's kind of just boring to me. But, now, I don't think a 4 is a bad rating. I think anything below, I think anything a below a 4 is bad. So, like, a 3, 2, or 1. 4 is kind of just, I don't want to watch it again. You know? But that doesn't mean it's bad. I'm gonna say they have really good conveyances of speed. Like, Shadow feels fast. And that's what I needed. And I'll admit the Alumni Scissor mode is pretty cool. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I am not a Killer Kill fan. Uh, and probably my biggest thing for the episode is why did we get an episode with Shadow for our legacy season? Like, Shadow had one decent episode, and one I've not seen in forever, so I can't say. But, I think it's pretty cool they gave him a win, and, yeah. Let's just move on. Number 15. Uh, oh, I'm gonna sneeze. Uh, uh for number 15, it's kinda just what I don't have any- <laughs> Sorry, it's kinda just one I don't have any opinion on. I just don't care about it. Uh, Steve- oh wait, no, that's a different one. Steven vs. Star, uh, this one I don't like because I think it got a lot of things wrong. First of all, puppet animation, I just don't really like it. It's just, it feels stiff, which is bad when these two have so much potential in their fight. Uh, also, it's probably not a good thing that the only reason I cared about this fight was because I wanted to see Steven die. I, I don't know why, I just wanted to. But then I watched it again, and I realized, holy god, Steven is being out of character here. Like, seriously, if you look at it, you realize stuff like Steven in throwing a shield at Star, even though they say he's a pacifist. And I feel like Star gets far too angry far too quickly. Like, she goes into her most powerful form because Steven knocked her into some sand. That That's it. That's all he did. And the Starge decides that's enough to murder him, basically. Uh, and that always annoyed me. <laughs> but it does have some really cool scenes. Like, straight up, I love the scene at the end with all the melons sort of making it look like it was a gory bloodbath. When really it's just melon juice. <laughs> but in the end, I'm not really going to watch this episode again. I just don't like it. I don't have a stake in either character, and yeah. Right, this is the episode I thought it was. Uh, yeah, it is. I, I do not care about Heihachi vs. Geese in the slightest. Uh, it, I'll watch it again if I have to, but since I don't have to, I probably won't. It, it's just not a very good episode to me, you know, it's just boring. Uh, I, I, I don't get much out of it, you know? Just any time I watch it, I don't get much from it. And I just kind of think it's boring. Uh, the animation's good, but I think Geese's broken English is really annoying, and, and the fact that they'd shown us a more deeper version of him makes me think they could have done more with it, and it could have been good, you know? Uh, 
Also, the predictable line to me got boring on, like, the third iteration of it. So, yeah. Honestly, I don't have too much to say. Good death, though. Probably the my favorite death of the first half of the season. Then it got immediately upstaged by pretty much every one in the second half. Right, number 13. I actually can't remember what's here. Oh, right. Uh, I'm guessing most of you would have probably expected this to be number 16, like, dead last. But personally, I think there's a lot to love here. It's probably because I didn't have my sights very high on it. Like, all I wanted was a cool kill from Shao Kahn. That was literally it. And I got that, and I'm happy with it. Uh, some people complain about the jank and how Oni has different body proportions and stuff, but I feel like it was kind of just an episode that was made on a time crunch because they realized you can't have these two returning characters come back and it not be a big, big uh, 3D fight, but since they had just moved the SFM team over to Blender, they didn't really have the time to, like, move back to SFM, you know? And it would have just been a bit easier to make it here. But I feel like this should have been Sprite. Mainly because there's one episode which deserved it more. <sighs> Number 12, I can explain, okay? Because it's Mother vs. Aizen. This fight, I I'm gonna be honest, I had my favorite set by the time the last two episodes were about to come out. And I figured this and the... Wait, like, when there was, like, four episodes left, I figured out this would be one of, pretty much the only fight which could top it. And since I had recently gone into Bleach, and I'd become a massive fan of Aizen, I was really hyped for it, so that I could learn more about him. Uh, and then the fight came out. I love the analysis, mainly from Madara. Uh, Aizen's is kind of just standard. They mostly just do versus stuff, whilst they talk a lot about Mars. Mother is like story, is character, and I think that's cool. But the fight is just so janky, you know? The, the early bits are just so stiff, because Puppet is just not the right fight for these two. This was built for SFM. Like, this was screaming at me, SFM. This would be amazing. And as is, I think there are some really cool points. Like, the bit where Madara just summons the meteor, like, it's nothing. I love that. Uh, also, the track, it's got some amazing points where it's one of my favorites, but then it's also got moments where it's just the guy's a bit too high-pitched, where he's just singing normally, and I don't like that. But, yeah. It's not a bad fight. It's one of the ones I've rewatched the most, but I think that's mainly just because I've been trying to say to myself to bump it up to a 7. <sighs> Whatever. Okay, number 11. Macho Man vs. Cool Light Man. I feel like most people kind of agree that out of the like, 7 out of 10 episodes, this one's probably the worst. And that doesn't mean it's bad, though. So. It's really fun. And I don't think the uh, Boomstick's Dad thing is that bad. The fact that they made the whole fight about it was kind of fun. And this was the one time where you could feel the, the, the Wiz and Boomsticks were picking sides. And I just realized they called them Boomsticks there. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, but I think the kill is pretty good, despite all the controversy behind it. Like, it's tasteful, if you ask me. It's, quite, it's tasteful enough. Like, it, it gets the job done. It doesn't make it too gory or anything. Hey... The blood is rainbow, guys. Chill out. Also, uh, this, the claymation style was really fun. And if they ever do, like, Sam, like, Sandman vs. Clayface, I think that would be really cool to do in claymation. Though, it would be expenses of as hell, basically. But, yeah, overall, good episode. Just, not the best. Number 10. Uh, we're cranking, we're at the top 10 now, and... Batman vs. Iron Man is pretty much the perfect gatekeeper. Like, this episode, I, I didn't expect much from it. Like, I expected it to be alright. So just one which would come in, hopefully give us some, some big scale action, and we got practically nothing. Like, if you ask me, this fight should have went huge. It should have went above and beyond. Like, planet should have been exploding here. So, I feel like it should have been tried to be made as distinct as possible from the last two. And it tried that, but 
I think it failed, and it should have had more destruction, basically. Give us more carnage. Heck, give us more carnage on Death Battle. I, I love carnage. Uh, like, the character, and his fight with Lucy was kind of awful. But, the track, I think, is really underrated. Like, it's probably the most underrated track this season. Like, rewatch watch this track. It's really good. Like, re, re listen to that. Uh, but, overall, good episode. Don't have too much to say about it. Uh, just give us more destruction, you know? Like, Soul's Hammer should have done so much more. Uh, also, maybe a bit more of Batman. Anyway, number nine. The final episode before the top half. And Lex vs. Doom is pretty much the perfect thing of, it's good, but it can't quite scrape the top half. Uh, I'm pretty much the only person who seems to like it. Since most other people say it's boring, and it doesn't get much done, it doesn't do too much. I, I don't see it, guys, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I like this fight. Like, seeing stuff like... How Doom is actively outsmarting Lex, who's considered to be one of the smartest people in all of comics, is really fun. And the fact that the two are mostly just trading their hacks throughout the fight, I love. Because if this had just been a big smackdown, it, would have made, it wouldn't have made sense for these two. Because these two are meant to be tactical masterminds. So just seeing them punch each other wouldn't have been fun. And overall, the backgrounds are stunning, guys. Come on. It's a good fight, you know, just can't crack the top half. Speaking of which, we're now on to the top 8. This is where I don't think there's any more 7 out of tens, you know? 7.5 or higher from here on out. And Core vs. Storm is the biggest shocker for me. Like, I was expecting this to be like a 5, maybe a 4. Like, I didn't expect very much from this fight, mainly because I was so disappointed that it wasn't Korra vs. Rey. Like, I wanted to learn more about Rey. Like, I, I wanted that. And just another Marvel character was kind of annoying, though I don't care too much about Marvel vs. DC, because I like him. Just not really Storm. Also, it was a massive stomp. And that's probably my biggest problem with the fight, how Korra constantly has to just have all these big moments of wailing on Storm to make it seem like Korra can win. But in the end, you kind of know that she's not going to win. <laughs> but overall, I really like the fight. Like, some of her moments are just really fun. And I think the bending is handled amazingly. I love some of the 2D moments. Like, it's, it's a good fight. Come on. Uh, yeah, let's, let's just move on. Uh, or should we? Because I'm not really going to make m many friends with number 7. So... Number 7 is a really good episode to most people, but I think Yoda vs. King Mickey is only an 8. Like, I, I don't think it's bad, okay? I don't think it's bad. Like, I love this fight, but it, it's not one which I can rewatch again and again and love, basically. Mainly around King Mickey stuff. Like, I think Yoda stuff is spot on. I think it's really good. But King Mickey just doesn't get much done, and I can't take him seriously. Like, Ultima Scream is just, no, please. I, I, I don't enjoy it, personally. If you enjoy it, that's perfectly fine. And to show my opinion, a lot of you guys are probably realizing at this point there's a certain episode which hasn't been talking about. I can explain, okay? Basically, this is considered the worst episode of the season by a lot of people. I love it, personally. I, I don't know, I just think this episode gets so much done. Like, Thunder Shroud is the best track of the first half of the season, and I pretty much think it's there's only one which is even close to it. And even then, I genuinely can't tell which one's better. Like, Thunder Shroud is an absolute banger, and the only one that's better I'll get to in a little bit. Like... Mother Eisen's one is really good, but I don't think it's quite there. Also, this fight just has so many awesome moments. Like, Mikasa just arriving up behind Blake is really fun. Also, I, I kind of feel like I have just this little thing in my heart of just Attack on Titan on Death Battle, finally. 
I'm, I'm kind of, I, I think it's kind of fun that the first time it is one, it's not, it's surprisingly not one of the nine shifters. It, it's Mikasa. You know, that, that's, that's nice. Uh, but, yeah, just not much to say. Just, it's a great episode. I, I love it. Don't worry, though, there's not any more controversial takes for the rest of the video. <laughs> Number five, uh, Link vs. Cloud. Come on. You gotta love Link vs. Cloud. Like, <laughs> this, there's just a lot to love about it. It was, this, it was meant to be the big episode to show off Splendor, and it's handled amazingly. Like, I kind of love the, the first ever 3D fight, now it gets to be the first ever Blender fight as well. And they get so much done in it, and it feels like most of their abilities were used, even though barely any were. Uh, honestly, I've heard the complaint of more should have been used, but nah. If, if they had done that, it would have been a 10 minute fight, and it would have dragged on. Like, they handled exactly what they needed, and they made it really fun. And just little things about trading of character, like the like Link breaking all the pots whilst Cloud trying to stop her. it. It's funny, you know? The nine, wait, uh, I don't think it's quite a 10 because it has a few janky moments, and I just can't get behind one of the big explosions. Also, the death is, it, it's mediocre, like, I, I, I wasn't expecting a big bloodbath or anything, but... Anna, maybe a more like more of Link trying to fight back, and making it seem like he didn't just get absolutely curve stomped. Uh, number four, uh, this episode means a lot to me. Pro vs. Iron Fist is big because Kung Fu Panda Two is my favorite film of all time, and Poe Po being the first anime film character in Death Battle is just really good to me. And also, I love how they don't make Iron Fist, like, they, they don't make him seem like less of an important character. Like, he gets just as many moments to shine as Poe, and for that, he earned, it, it, the episode has my respect. Also, it's the best, like, hand-to-hand -hand fight this season. The others focus a lot on hacks, or just utter scale. These two are just about punching each other, and it's the best for that. It's not quite a 10, because I think the track is a bit underwhelming, also, the death isn't perfect. And there's just a couple moments which could have been improved a bit, but overall, I love this episode, go watch it. It was originally a 10, but over time it's kind of moved down to a 9.5, and for all I know it might move down to a 9. <laughs> it, but it's an episode which means a lot to me, and it's my favourite episode of the first half of the season. Right. Going into number three, I need to say one thing and get it incredibly clear. <coughs> I My favorite episode for a while was uh, Deadpool vs. The Mask. I loved it. And all three of the next episodes have topped it in quality. Starting off with the first one to come out, Goku Black vs. Reverse Flash. Somehow this fight means more to me than Iron Fist vs. Poe. Because Reverse Flash is one of my favorite comic villains of all time. Like, if you ask me my three favorite comic villains, I will always tell you Carnage, Bane, Reverse Flash. And this allowed me to not only learn more about him, but get to see him at his best. You know? Like, and Goku Black is just such this chaotic character, that this fight was just chaos. Utter chaos. Something which other fights could only pray to be. Like, this is what people wanted. This is exactly the kind of fight people wanted from these two. And, yeah, it's just amazing. Like, a lot of people have complaints about the analysis, but I think it's fine. Like, I don't see as much of the hate behind Goku Black stuff. I mean, it's not the best analysis of all time. Uh, we'll get to that one soon. But, I don't know, it's just amazing. Just watch this episode. When it came out, I figured this was going to be the, my favorite of the season. And to have two rise up better than it, this kind of made this one even better. Anyway, number two. Time for the big reveal. Which one do I think is better? And Saitama vs. Popeye is absolutely flipping brilliant, man. 
Saitama is one of my favorite anime series of all time. And as you can see so far, pretty much all of the final few characters have meant something to me, you know? And One Punch Man being my favorite anime ever is really big. Personally, I didn't have as much of a connection to Popeye. Uh, my dad watched him a bit, but I didn't care too much. I just liked Saitama on the show. And I liked how it wasn't like they didn't try and treat Saitama like a joke. They didn't try and make it so that, oh, he's just constantly confused on why he's not killing Popeye in one hit. Or how they try, or they try and make Saitama like a villain. But they also don't make Popeye seem like he's too powerful. They accept that he's a cartoon, but they don't go too far with it. And I like that they explain the analysis. One thing I actually noticed, which was, I found really cool, was in the original analysis for Popeye, they bring up the Toon Force, and they explain that, and I think if they had left that in, it would have made it far too clear that Popeye won, and it would have just gone across, there was nothing Saitama could do, Saitama was just pathetic, and it would have just not sat right with me. So to have this just made me feel really good. Uh, I love this fight, and there's nothing that will change from it. However, it never got to become my favorite episode, because my favorite one had been settled a few weeks ago, <laughs> before this one. And number one, Dio vs. Alucard. This episode shocked me so much. Like, I, I knew nothing about Alucard going in, and... Dio, I just finished watching part 3, which I don't think is amazing. And to just see these two just wail on each other for a fight in the most brutal way imaginable was so good. Every shot felt like it was made with love and care. And every one of them are perfect to me. Like, everything is amazing in this fight. It feels like the episode which the two, which the creators wanted to do the most. You know, and it, it, it just does everything perfectly. It's got a pretty good track, so I forgot to say earlier, my favorite track this season was Reverse Rosé. Uh, <clears throat> this fight, but it just gets everything right, you know? Like, like, some of the lines are so good. Like, the little bow to your new god, and then Alucard's little, oh, like, it's his quote on the bird of Hermes is my name. Feeding my wings to keep to make me tame. It's so good, and I like how even though her Dio didn't really have much of a progression, they still found out a way to give it to him. Like first he's just using his vampire powers, then he starts stopping time, then he moves on to fully using the world, and that's another little thing I love that they don't treat Dio like a joke. Like it could have been so easy to just make Dio this big meme. Like, oh, it's, it's funny, it's funny Kono Dioda, man. Uh, uh, funny, funny, meme, meme, meme. But they, they left in the memes, sure. But they also made sure to treat him with respect. And we, they actively had Boomstick say he's one of the biggest a-holes on the entire show. And that was what you needed for Dio. Like, if they had done it any other way, I would have been so frustrated. But as is, it was such a good fight. Also, they understood it was going to be controversial, so they went out of their way to explain everything, and make a perfect explanation on why Dio won. So, I don't know, this is just my favorite episode, and I don't think it'll be top for a while. Anyway, thanks, thanks guys for watching, uh, this is pretty much the first time I'm trying hard with OBS to make something good. Uh, everything else, wait, my other video was kind of just a little celebration for 10 subs, which someone's unsubbed again. So I'm getting a lot of Discord notifications right now, I'm gonna have to read them after this. This is also the first time where I've had to, like, re-record. Because the first one kind of just screwed up, then the second one for some reason just wouldn't, like, record. But, yeah, thanks you guys for watching. Uh, if you make it to the end, just leave a little comment, just say if you agree with me or not. And yeah, I'll see you guys later.